you've made $12 million in one year. Right. Right? I just got word from the pilot that we have too many pounds of money on this plane. <laughs> and it's a strong possibility our ass going down. <laughs> I was the biggest dealer in the bluff. Uh, a, large, a long period of time, I had the bluff and I had Simpson. Six, an Atlanta rapper accused tonight of leading a gang that was allegedly caught trying to move nearly $2 million worth of pot through Metro Atlanta. Fast forward to this past weekend, a complaint says a K-9 unit met Rollo's plane after it landed at PDK and found just under a million dollars worth of marijuana. It's a real life crime drama. Famous Atlanta rapper Rollo is just minutes from being released on bail when shocking new evidence keeps him behind bars. Evidence the prosecutors say shows the rapper is still running a empire from behind bars. Exactly. So them niggas was already, them niggas already was telling when I was everywhere I go, you know how they was kept coming and finding me wherever I was pulling up at. It was the niggas that was with me that was telling them where I was at. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. Your boy Rollo has been released, finally, after doing a few years in the pen. His well-documented history with the law and his music career has made him infamous in the streets and in the booth. He's had to deal with a lot from beats with other rappers, constant run-ins with the Alphabet Boys, even rumors that he was snitching. And through it all, he's still standing. Since his release, the streets have been talking, especially since his new track First Day Out hit the web. Rut telling it how it is and he's standing on business. With years behind the gate, behind him, Rollo stands to gain a whole lot by keeping his head straight and his game clean. So just what does Rollo have planned for the future? How's he doing in the present? And will his troubled past come back to haunt him? We gonna find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Born and bred in the A, Atlanta, Georgia, Terrell Davis, AKA Rollo, journey started in the heart of the South. He didn't come from a place of privilege. His parents, grinding to make ends meet, instilled in him the hustle mentality from the jump. He wasn't given a silver spoon. That gave him a rather gritty reality check. Rollo hit the books while navigating the streets. The concrete jungle was a double-edged playground. It wasn't just about the textbooks. It was about survival lessons in the school of hard knocks. His wasn't no Cinderella story at all. It's a tale of survival and grinding against the odds. Rollo's roots run deep, and his early days laid the foundation for the street poet we know today. I was a student that really, really, really wanted to go to school. I really wanted to graduate from school. I, I wanted to be electrician. So I really wanted to um, kind of get me a trade in the avenue. But I was homeless and stuff like that, so I had to hustle a lot. You said you was homeless? Yeah, I was homeless from the age of 12 to 14. I was homeless from seventh grade to the ninth grade. I was homeless. According to Rollo himself, his dad was 53 and his mom was only 25 when he was born. He claims that his dad was rich and a kingpin himself, and his mom was probably his dad's sugar baby. I knew my real dad, you know what I'm saying? He was like, 30 years older than my mother. My mother was like 26 when she had me, and my dad was like 56 when, she, when he had me. So he was kind of like a sugar daddy to my mother. You could probably understand how this unfolds. No wonder Rollo saw himself dealing illegal substances and putting in the work. According to him, he went to juvie around 32 times. But from the age of 12 to 16, I, I went to juvie now 32 times. 32 times, total of your life. Juvie now. Okay. From 12 to um, 16. So in a four year span, you went to jail 32 times? Yeah, because that's when I started hustling. That's when I didn't really know what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? I was kind of moving slapping. I was fumbling heavy. Yeah. So. And all that Rollo was facing, he felt like he had a story to tell. And his creative wit really didn't let him hold back as soon as he saw himself moving into the industry. Rollo's musical journey kicked off when he was about 19 years old. His first album titled Fan American Gangsta really caught attention. Bro was already spitting enough bars to construct a federal prison. Thanks to Rollo's partner from the start, Young Scooter, who took Rollo and his family when he was homeless around 12 years old. Gave me three, four features for free and did the videos. And you know, the video costs even more. Mm -hmm. 
and he did everything for me, you know what I'm saying? And I just been so thankful for him doing those things, hooking me up with Future and stuff like that. And we just got real, real close, and I feel like I owe him the world. Right. His connection to Scooter in particular really helped Rollo get recognized as he started his career. Rollo asked his buddy to request Future for a shout out and he got one. I said, oh, go get me a song for Future. So Future for like this shit. I ain't gonna charge him much. He came up with a little budget. I went over there to pay Future. The Future. The song ended up being a hit rock. Can't lie. Even securing a feature in one of his songs. This had Rollo playing with the big boys in the music industry. His back to back hits included masterpieces like his early work, Can't Lie. So I'm like, I gave him the money though, you know what I'm saying? So I sent him a picture. I'm like, oh, shot me out, you know what I'm saying? Tell the world that we got a new single on the way. Future did. And Lil Cali Pakistan. These works of art helped bruh get the wheel moving, and boy, did it move fast. But all alongside Rollo's music career, he was also allegedly working another job, one that required him to put in that work work. After his old man passed away, Rollo inherited his business. While some may think it's a choice, there are a few compelling consequences if you pull out and leave your associates hanging in that line of work. Anyways, Rollo had to step in and ensure that business went on. But with that business, Rollo had something that his father did not, a celebrity status. Rollo knew everyone who was anyone, and everybody knew him. His network expanded way beyond what Papa Rollo could have imagined, and Rollo was now moving bigger volumes more frequently. This obviously meant that there was more money around as well, so Rollo was talking big bank by then. You've made $12 million in one year. Right. Right? So. However, he was not only making dough, but also earning respect by giving back to his community. His influence was complementing his career and his business. It almost became a cycle. Rollo was giving back big time, and he owned 26 apartment units in his neighborhood, and he was taking care of everybody. I actually live in that, that community. I started buying more houses in the community, you know. Okay, so do you own your whole block? Yeah, 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 exactly. So every house on your block? Nah, you I say I own five houses and I own 26 apartment units. His influence kept growing and Rollo kept expanding his network. Soon enough, with an alleged streak like Pablo Escobar, Rollo was viewed as the biggest fish in Atlanta. But it was not just cars and houses that Rollo got for his people. He even handed out a percentage of his earnings from his music career. However, it was not all hugs and kisses, since the business, no matter how much you love it, is a dangerous one. Rollo claims that he's been shot at multiple times, and that really made him realize the life that he was living. Yeah, I've been shot a couple times. I got shot right here in my leg, and I got shot right here in my leg. I got shot, I got shot a couple times. Rollo had seen enough beef by now, both inside the business and the industry. A bit of a roughneck, Rollo was constantly killing time by picking beef. Bro has dissed a number of rappers, including Black Youngster, Yo Gotti, and Moneybag Yo. With Black Youngster, the beef even escalated to Rollo directly threatening him if he came to Atlanta. Things weren't that pretty for Yo Gotti or Moneybag either, and Moneybag had to clear the air to avoid an ongoing beef. Hey, back to the west side of Atlanta. We all in Alabama with this shit. Nigga, don't act like that. Don't act like you don't see this shit, nigga. However, perhaps the situation was worse between Rollo and Young Thug. According to Rollo, the beef was inevitable, and mostly just a matter of them being on two opposite sides of the game. At one point, things had escalated to the point where Rollo even claimed that he had tried to get Young Thug assassinated by getting him hit up. And you even admitted to, like, shooting at Young Thug. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, I admitted to the shooting at Young Thug. However, luckily enough, Young Thug survived that. Both of them did. Nonetheless, Rollo and Young Thug eventually found their peace, and Rollo even expressed his regrets afterwards. His beef with Young Thug not only simmered down, but Young Thug and Rollo even saw each other get in each other's back. The two even collaborated on music. He realized he was making enough from his music career and had done enough for his community to deserve a life of peace, so Rollo decided to pivot entirely towards his music career. However, by this time, he had become too big to go unnoticed, allegedly being the biggest trapper in Atlanta. This saw law enforcement constantly trying to bust him. It wasn't just the local PD, it was also the feds. That made sense since Rollo had already moved goods worth millions, allegedly. I just got word from the pilot that we have too many pounds of money on this plane. <laughs> and it's a strong possibility our ass going down. <laughs> we finna die. 
always out to get them. The feds got their break when they caught Rallo's crew transporting large stashes of herb allegedly. Rapper Terrell Davis, who goes by the name Rallo, faced a federal judge today. He and nine other defendants are accused of moving nearly $2 million worth of marijuana. Rallo was lucky enough to not be there, but unlucky enough to still be associated. His men were wearing Fam Goon tags, which was an offshoot of Fam America, a self-proclaimed music movement associated with and led by Rallo. None of his men snitched though, and the cops needed more than just Fam Goon logos to prove a strong link, although it did create a good foundation. You see, the confiscated stash was worth a bag, so the cops knew it was big enough to open the case for Rallo's entire network. To their amusement, Rallo made the dumb move of posting about losing a million dollars in a single day immediately after. I guess fame and power just got to his head and at that point, the man actually thought he was invincible. Although the cops following and intercepting him, just about anywhere he went should have been a wake up call. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. The usual, right? This had already made a strong case against Rallo and other Instagram posts also complimented these findings with Rallo frequently featuring fam going elements and other popular suspects in his social media. In another post, Rallo indirectly declared that he was leaving the game and that it would have inevitably landed him in jail. Just after the authorities charged Rallo with multiple counts including the possession of dope with the intention to distribute, his apartment complex, Lower Pakistan, was raided and the feds confiscated his rides and a few other things in the name of their investigation. Undercover agents claimed that they had bought straps from Rallo in his apartment complex and this paved the way for the confiscation of up to six other apartment buildings owned by Rallo. Rallo was taken into custody in 2018 and was awaiting trial for his crimes. People were already voicing against the arrest and the petition came out to demand his release. Some say this is what pressured authorities to lay out terms of a potential bond that he could avail but the conditions were a bit too concerning. They included Rallo having to stay in a designated rental property and be subject to 24-7 lockdown unless for medical or legal emergencies. This still could have been a good deal enough for any kingpin to take, considering the nature of the charges pressed against him. The prosecutor saying, um, I was asking for a better plea, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, this marijuana down, like, you know, why y'all being so adamant about me doing, you know, so much time in prison? Some However, it then came to light that Rallo was allegedly still running his empire from the inside and that immediately saw the bond offer revoked. It came to light and made news that Rallo was using an Apple Watch to land deals and instructing his significant other on how to expand his empire. Rallo was also not behaving the best. Yeah, walk through the jail like I want to now, nigga. I run this shit. I rented it. It's mine. Free my mother. Bro, nigga, found cool. Rent the jail, rent the whole jail. Picking up more beef from the inside and handing out encrypted messages regarding all his dealings, Rallo eventually realized that he was not behaving right and everything he was doing, even from the inside, was having severe consequences. Terrell Davis, who goes by Rallo, says something isn't right about his arrest. Although he can't talk about critical details in the case since it's an ongoing federal investigation, he talked about how social media has played a role in the case. They let me know that social media it's probably one of the strongest things in our lives right now. Prosecutors are using his social media posts and captions against him, something his attorneys argue is just for entertainment. And I realized how big I was and how powerful I was. And like, I had to know whatever I say, they're gonna follow me and people gonna take it in. Rallo came talking about the apparent shock about how social media played a big role and how everything he ever said while his head was in the clouds was coming back to bite him in his John Davis hind pot. It became apparent that he was not only losing his freedom, but he was also losing respect when his patience and perseverance started to corrode. Rallo talked about possibly taking the plea deal, but then he would have his buddies locked up for good and he was too loyal for that. Rallo also broke down multiple times while talking on podcasts from behind bars. Rallo was not having it easy, but while the state was constantly trying to pin Rallo down, 
There was also major good in his work that made the people like Drake petition for his release. This became public when a letter directed to President Joe Biden was made public in which a few notables as well as members of the general public called for a pardon. But what's the point really if people are on the inside snitching? Rallo's own people were exposing his details. Exactly. So them niggas already, them niggas already was telling when I was, everywhere I go, you know how they was coming and finding me wherever I was pulling up at. It was the niggas that was with me that was telling them where I was at. That's crazy. All of this, very eye-opening for Rallo, who realized that no one is truly sincere. He realized this is just how the game is played and his behavior started becoming more appropriate. He dropped the reins of his empire altogether. These realizations and all the evidence against Rallo made him realize that he was fighting a losing battle. In June 2022, Rallo was sentenced to eight years, of which he had already served four. Another 1.5 years was shaved off due to good behavior. His team also managed to get him a good enough deal for cooperating, and eventually he managed to get out a few days ago after serving six years in prison. Last we checked, his team had also advised him to enroll in the RDAP program to reduce another year off his sentence. Apparently, Rallo said that he could have gotten off even earlier if one of his men who had snitched on him chose to come clean about his commitment and they would both get a reduced sentence after committing to discouraging a crime-written lifestyle. Rallo received credit for time served and once his home address was authorized by the halfway house, the court suggested that he wear an ankle monitor for a year. Snitching accusations have dogged Rallo's imprisonment since one of his artists pressed him overworking with the government in May. However, he clarified that all was a misunderstanding and that the reason was he had to do a prosecutive misconduct hearing. But it does not matter anymore since Rallo was out and he could finally get to see his daughter again. To many, it seemed like Rallo came out a different man, not in terms of his compassion for his community, but rather in terms of his realization of his wrongdoings. If anything, the former is still reflected by his warm welcome in which his friends, family, and supporters came out to receive him with an entire convoy, including a helicopter. His fellow Muslim friends was also there chanting and waving their flag. Just a few days since his release, Rallo has released the song titled First Day Out, which captured Rallo's journey and their celebration after his release. He was seen filming this immediately after his release before heading back to his neighborhood. And not just that, it was evident that his loved ones were ecstatic to see him. His legacy, according to his fans, is untarnished and his work is not forgotten. If anything, Rallo might have lost a few years of his freedom, but he has not lost the love of those that he helped set free. Bruh took the Instagram to post about the song, but also left a message for the wise. He starts by saying, I seen true kings and queens risk their life, freedom and livelihood to help build and feed villages. But when the wars came, they lost their freedom, allies, wealth, property, and some even lost their lives. If it's anything in this world that can turn a person hard against you, then the love was never there in real life. Rallo goes on to say, a pretty lie can bring about an ugly truth. Standing by your people when the odds is against them shows great strength, integrity, and honor. If you ever heard of me doing anything other than that, then the story is edited and fabricated. My heart is in Islam and my heart is with Dolph and I ain't ever going against it. Stop hating and welcome a real one home. Hashtag Rallo free. The last part of the excerpt is the interesting part. Rallo was seeing some speculation on the internet about him dissing the CMG label that Yo Gotti oversees. Of course, both Gotti and Young Dolph had very bad blood. What caused people to talk about it was a bar that he had rapped on the track saying, After the song dropped, Rallo dropped a tweet to make more people understand where he was coming from, saying, The internet want me to get out on the BS so bad. No, dog, I ain't on that. For the love of Allah, I ain't beefing with money bag or no dude on this planet. Stop hating and welcome me home. And with Rallo home, it's clear that he's back and better than ever and ready to claim his spot at number one as the number one fam goon. His allegiances are clear, his hunger is clear, and hopefully his ability to stay free and out the pen is crystalline. If he stay smart, stay alert, and stay real, he gonna be a'ight. I'm out, y'all.